I think I, I think that's my new job. I just want to be retired. What are you doing? Can I collect Social Security yet? How does that work? To get to retirement, what is it that you're doing? Because I feel like you, you have a very expensive lifestyle. Like you're not going to get closer to retirement by traveling every weekend. What do you have no, to say? I'm not. No, I'm not. Am I going to make it to retirement age if I keep traveling every weekend? Because I couldn't even fly home on Sunday. I was so hungover. That's why you missed your flight? I thought you just missed your flight. Well, oh okay. My. So, like, I woke up at, like, 730. I'm like, oh, my God. I got to leave for the airport in, like, an hour. Like, mm -hmm. I was having the Sunday scaries really bad. And I was like, oh, God, I got to get on an airplane for three hours. I don't know if I could do it. So I was like laying there and then Ariel and I are like now besties with Trent. So we text Trent because I knew he had a 730 flight. And I was like, how bad is the airport? And he was like, it's real packed. And I'm like, ooh, so I'm hungover, packed airport, bumpy flight home. Like, Don't you have TSA pre-check? Yeah, but it doesn't matter. I stood in TSA pre-check for an hour in Denver. Pre-check doesn't matter when everybody has pre-check. I kind of know what you're saying, but I've never had to wait for an hour. I had it was actually probably like an hour. Actually, the only reason why I didn't miss my flight in Denver without checking a bag, I almost missed my flight, was because my flight was delayed. Wow. Yeah. So anyway, so and then I just made the elective decision that Errol and I would go get brunch, and then we would go shopping, and then we went to Trump Tower, and I bought gifts for all my family members. See, this is this is what I'm talking about, though. These are rich people problems. Because, like, me, a common man, a working man, I can't afford to miss my flight. Because then I have to pay for a new flight. I can't afford it. It didn't cost me any money to change it. You can click on Delta, you click same day change. Oh, really? Well, yeah, anyway. and then the best part was is that Sunday flight was full. Monday's was not full, so I got upgraded. But I definitely couldn't afford to go to brunch in New York City. I couldn't do that. No way, fine. man. It was fine. All right. Well, that, that sounds like fun. We had a really good weekend in the book. For everybody, everybody but Florida State. Yeah, great. Thank you. Everybody about Florida State. Florida State, I didn't see the game. Yeah. I asked you on the show when I was there. I was like, what is with all this Georgia Tech love? We haven't seen anything. We haven't seen anything. But you we don't see anything. You, that's a problem. That's a problem with doing this. I'm actually glad you brought that up because I was going to talk about this on that show. When I say, like, when we talk about NFL Week 1, when I say all the bets I've seen are on a team, that's all, like, sharp betters this far yeah. in advance. All the Florida State money came in Saturday morning. The day of the game. That, that, that's yeah, but you didn't. You said you didn't see any Georgia Tech money yet. The we line was seen, dropping. We hadn't seen anything, and then All everyone right. bet Florida State the morning of the game. They money line parlayed it. They teased it. They bet them to come back. They lost. We won. That it's an important thing to understand. Like when we go through the stuff I've seen for NFL Week One, which is like what ten days from now. That's going to be all sharp. Play. Seven days from now. The NFL starts seven days from now. Well, the Sunday games are 10 days from now. Okay. Uh, that, those are all going to be sharp play. But it doesn't mean that we're not going to be rooting for those sides by the time the games kick off because all the recreational money is going to come in next weekend. Okay. I don't know if you understand that. Do you understand that, Kelly? No, I have no idea how any no, of this don't. works. I can tell I mean, you. This, this is why I got to have... Chase, who already can't do his first show on Saturday, so Art to Caesar's going to fill in for him. Uh, right. Give me a good look behind the counter so that I can understand a little bit better. I would lean on Art to Caesar. For that. I'm going. Chase already got fired. He already got fired, and then Babakitis proceeds to text me. John Murray didn't put me on Sunday mornings, so now I got to find somebody else for Sunday mornings. Yeah, because he asked to not work on Sundays. That's why he's not on Sunday. So anyway, we have a new show on Wager Talk. Well, we have a show that we're going to revamp. It's already called Last Call, where we check in with handicappers before the games kick off. But now we're going to check in with the West is that a, first. Is that a working title, or, or is that is there any wiggle room there? It was already called Last Call. So I want to play off the Last Call moniker that we already have. We've already got an established brand, so we're going to keep it. And if not, we'll pivot. But... As it stands right now, we have three handicappers that come on, but now it's going to be a bookmaker and then two handicappers. So you're going to get, you want, I got to say, I think we got to rethink, we got to reshuffle the deck here. My guys are going to be on the show. No, gonna, Art DeCesar is coming in your well, Art, office, Art's 8 a.m. Saturday morning. That is non-negotiable. Art is great. Art, I, I think you can count on Art to be there. Okay. The other two guys, I mean, they're gallivanting around the country pretty much all year round. Yeah, they're you like, said that I take a lot of vacations. Chase like, is constantly on vacation. Oh, he's never here. I, I, he, he's not here today. He's on vacation. 
So I don't yeah. know. I don't know that. that Where do these kids be. get the money? You know, we were talking about that today. Because, like, I understand they get, like, they get X amount of time off, and I can live with that. But how do they afford to fly so much? Like, I, you know, last week I had to fly out of town for another reason. But you know, it's very expensive to go on all these trips. How do they afford it? I just use points. And I slum it on Southwest. I like Southwest. I do too, but it's easy. Easy to fly Southwest. All right. What do you want to get into first? Let's talk about. Do you, you want know, to talk, talk about your lovely guardians? Yeah, we can talk about that. So I, I met the Cleveland, uh, they used to be called the Cleveland Indians, I think. Ah, yes. And those then guys. They, they changed the name to the Gu- Guardians. Bad name. That's a bad name. The logo sucks. Because that their old their old cheap Wahoo logo, it's a great yep. logo. It's a great hat. New logo, terrible. But I met them over wins. I told Kelly that that was the win total that I liked in baseball. I bet okay. it. Kelly. And then I bet the AL Central along with it plus three forty. So I'm the bad guy that you're they blew a, a nine game lead. You're not a bad guy, but I never I never. I mean, I wish I had that bet. I mean, I wish it was a good move by you. But you're still like nervously watching them every day, whereas me, I'm nervously. I mean, I'm right now. I'm breaking even. I had a dime on the season win total. I had a dime plus three forty on the AL Central. Dime is one thousand dollars. Correct. So like, I already won the over, so it paid for this if they lose. But they had a nine game lead. Well, they got, and then I think the biggest problem that you have is you've got two teams that are nipping at your heels. So it's it's not as yeah. It's not as simple as like, okay, we got to hold off the Royals. Are you a Royals fan? No. Why not? How the hell would I be a Royals fan? Because you're from Kansas. No. Oh, okay. Well, whatever. But uh, first of all, the Royals are in Missouri, just like the other team. I got, yeah, but I got friends from Kansas. My buddy Andy Samuelson, he's from Kansas. He's a big Royals and Chiefs fan, even though they play in Missouri. So it's because he doesn't understand how this works. Well, look, the, the Royals have the best baseball player in the American League, Bobby Wood Jr who is awesome, should be the MVP, different story. They are playing some great baseball right now. They're nipping at the heels of our Guardians. But I'm not I'm not really worried about it at all. In my mind, I've already won, so I don't... Yes, you have already won, yeah. and I'm very happy for you. I don't know if I, I believe that. Uh, I'm, just a little, I'm just a little irritated, sorry. That's it's been a long we're... day. Some of us have to work, John Murray. I did a podcast at 6.30 this morning with uh, Krista Barakalika. It's like 1 o'clock there. It's dark and stormy here. It might as well be midnight. <laughs> Let's talk yeah, about... Yeah, I saw Chris was on a plane. He tweeted some picture of some lady's feet. Ew. Yeah, I was like, like can you bare, not? Barefoot or or uh, socks? Barefoot. On an Barefoot. airplane. That's not good. That's no. not good. Let's talk about... Kelly's got... Kelly has a contest for college football survivor... We yeah. have a contest, yes. A, yeah, but you're the star. So yeah, of course. I'm the only one that, you know, has been constantly berating people to join. That's Email, not true. I, spamming I, my old proxy customers, sending uh, out emails, tweeting four times a day, putting in different various gambling groups that I'm in, sending to every single person I know with death threats, saying that if you don't, like, that's why I did the Ariel Epstein this morning. I said, if you don't enter this contest, I am not going to be your friend anymore. It's not really a death threat. That's how, that sounds like that, that sounds like maybe a favor. Uh, I mean, do, don't you feel like sometimes you're a bad influence on that kid? Of course, it's a good thing. Well, I, we had our we had our college football wins league draft last night. A league okay. that you a league you once won. I did. You, that you was fun. That and league. then they didn't invite me back again. Yeah, I don't think the commissioner likes you. What did I do to him? I don't know. I think maybe you were just too arrogant for him. You know, you just you just come across very, you know, Kelly. too arrogant for him. <laughs> That's the impression I got. I don't know, but we have. Wait, is this the guy? Never mind. I know. I know exactly who he is. I yeah yeah too arrogant. Uh huh. Okay, I know exactly who this kid is. I remember. We had the draft last night, and I I encourage the boys, the lads. Most of them live in Virginia. Sign up. And give let me do some, let me do some math. Right now we have a seventeen thousand dollar overlay. Eight hundred and thirty nine people have signed up. Hundred thousand dollars guaranteed. Still seventeen thousand dollar overlay. I've got four hundred bucks pending in my splash account because 
if it gets down to like Saturday morning and there's still a lot of overlay, I'm going to add four more entries. Oh yeah, for sure. If there's still an overlay on Saturday morning, you should definitely get more. There, by the way, the NFL survivor that you and I are in, um, with them, we have five entries and then I have one. The current overlay, I kid you not, is like almost 800,000. Let me do the math here. Is that a calculator? Yeah, I need to do the math. Be quiet. Uh, 1 million. Uh, wow. 800, 800, $816,700 is the current overlay. And they're guaranteeing the prize? And they're guaranteeing the million dollars. I'm kidding, man. Whoa. Yeah, $100 entry. Uh, I don't get anything for that, but I'm just letting you guys know. There's tons of overlays. Uh, there's a girl that used to work for you. She's got to pick five. Huge overlay as well. Probably going to have to upload some more money. I mean, there's when you have dead money in pools like this, yeah. like, I feel like you kind of got to take advantage. Well, I always wait. You know that I wait to see what the overlay is going to be in the, the circa millions. So I always wait till the very end to sign up because I want to see what kind of overlay we're looking at. If there is one. Right. So I think you, I think you gotta, in this day and age, you have to wait till the end, see what it looks like and then make a move. Oh, I bet most people probably sign up for tons of contests within the last minute. I mean, what are they doing right now for the super contest? You guys just had super contest weekend when I was there last weekend. It's doubled since I was there. I was number three thirteen. It's gotta be over 700 now. Yeah. It's over 700 and we're going to get, we'll have a rush here this weekend, Labor Day weekend. And then of course, I don't understand the locals that sign up like Saturday, honestly, but I, I, I understand there are people they'll be here for NFL week one. And I know so many people flying out for NFL week one and plan on yeah. signing up. NFL week one is going to be a really big week here for sure. But do you want to stick with college week one? What do you, what, what do you, well, of course I want to talk college week one, but you had also mentioned that you had some, um, Sharp action for NFL Week One. Are you you want that it? first? You want? Sure. You're, so you're going sure. out of college. Sure. Let's hear. Let's hear. Let me get my handy dandy notebook. Okay. Well, this one. So this one's obvious, but it's a number that's moved a ton. I think it's really interesting. The Jets are now down to plus three and a half at the 49ers. Because Aaron Rodgers owns the Niners. That's the first Monday night game of the season. Aaron Rodgers is off of an Achilles injury. And yeah, but the, the Niners are the Super Bowl loser. Everybody's going to want to back the Jets. Well, that's so that's let's talk about two things. They're betting the nine. They're betting the Jets in Week One. They also are betting the Niners under eleven and a half wins for a whole like a whole host of reasons. They've got all kinds of. They've got a really tumultuous off season. Do you want me to tell you what the witch said? What the what? witch told me and Ariel. Yes, I do. Brock Purdy's never going to win a Super Bowl. I feel really bad. I well, really like Brock Purdy. He probably won't. Most people will never win a Super Bowl. Right? Yeah, I know. But, like, he should have won last year. Yes, he should have won. And, and that's, that's why I feel bad. Because he was on the precipice of winning a Super Bowl. And she's like, it's never going to happen again. It's, like, not even going to come close. I'm like, wow, that's really sad. Okay. He should have won last year. Kelly's right. The 49ers blew that game. And God, that sucked. We're talking a Super Bowl hangover. Trent Williams is holding out. Christian McCaffrey's banged up. There's all the rumors about Ayuk being traded. And this is this team's had a very difficult offseason. How are they going to get up for a week one game when they were so close to winning the Super Bowl, when they've been so close to winning the Super Bowl in the past, not just last season? They, they had a double-digit lead in the fourth quarter against the Chiefs the first time they played in the Super Bowl. So th this franchise has been right on the doorstep, expecting them to take a step back this year, I guess. Two other ones from the Sunday card. They're betting Cleveland against Dallas. And they're betting Pittsburgh plus three. When it, when it was Pittsburgh plus three minus 110, we saw some really respected money on the Steelers at the Falcons. Wait, you guys are doing minus 108 for well, that We are now. That's true. But this was when this was back in the summer. Right now, all of our NFL sides are minus 108. That's and awesome. They're gonna, and they're going to be like that for the, you know, for the foreseeable future. But at the time, it was plus three, minus one, ten. So I think that's an important distinction. People need to understand if, if a sharp group bets something at plus three, minus one, ten, or plus three and a half, minus one, ten, and you're laying 20 or whatever, it's not the same bet. And, and, or you're 
taking two and a half even money, it's not well, the same. Well, then you're then it's totally not the yeah. same. You know, so be be careful. Be careful playing around those numbers. So they bet what Cleveland money line? They bet Cleveland. Well, you know, Cleveland started this game as a dog. Yes. And and the numbers, it's gone through zero. Now Cleveland's a small favorite, so they just keep betting on the Browns. Okay. I don't really, I don't, I don't really trust Deshaun Watson. Can we, can we say that? Eh, I don't, I don't know, know what to think about this Browns team. That seems the, like. They're, the that AFC North, be- even as bad as Russell Wilson is, I still think Tomlin's going to win at least eight games. And that this, these guys just beat the ever-living crap out of each other every single mm-hmm. year. And that's what makes it hard, especially from the divisional standpoint. I've already started looking at how we're going to map out our survivor because did you see how the survivor is on Splash? There's a lot of double pick weeks. There is? Yeah. It's hard enough to pick one. I know. Well, look look at that Cleveland game. What jumps off the board to me in that game would be Dallas teasers. Because you're this is an opportunity for you to take a team that opened as a favorite and you can have them at plus eight and a half, plus seven and a half uh, through a teaser and I have to attach to something else. But that could be a low total in that game too. So that could be a good teaser option for week one. Okay, so week 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, you have to pick two teams for a slate. Well, how, how could anybody possibly do that? All right. Well, we'll, we'll have to we'll cross that road when we come to it. Don't worry. I'm working on the spreadsheet. I'm worried. You working on a spreadsheet is not doing anything to calm me down. I'm, I'm worried about this. A uh, couple things we're going to be rooting for. Season-long stuff. New England, we're going to need them to go over five wins. Yes! And I need that. Detroit, we're going to want them to go under 10 and a half wins and and one other one thing the sharp guys have really been hammering that i found interesting that i'm intrigued by the rams betting the rams to win in the nfc west betting them to win the nfc and they've really driven the price on the rams playoffs we opened at plus 115 it's now minus a quarter on the rams to make the playoffs the nfc doesn't have anywhere near the quarterback depth that we see in the afc well if you expect the Niners to take a step back. I don't necessarily think the Seattle Seahawks are going to take a step forward. They always put up a good fight there at home, and it's definitely not going to be the Cardinals. So the Rams seems like the obvious choice there. I agree. I think the, I think the play makes a lot of sense. So that that's one for sure we've seen. And then you know the team I like is the Colts. I like the Colts. Me too. I have them to win the AFC South. I like it. Why do you always? Do you feel like you always have to one up me? Cause like I bet Guardians to win the to go over wins, and you bet them to win the division, and then I, I bet the Colts to make the playoffs plus one fifty, and uh, you've got to bet them to win the division. You've always got to go, you know what I mean? It's not, it's not, it's nothing personal. I promise you. <laughs> All right, let's get into finally the biggest game of the weekend. Well, what's the what do you, what do you consider to be the biggest game this weekend? That's a good question. I guess if I had to say what the biggest names are. The two biggest brands, USC, LSU. But I think the biggest game is Notre Dame uh, A&M. You think, that, you think that's a bigger game than Clemson, Georgia, in terms yeah. of brands? Really? Are you kidding me? Georgia has I never won did. like 18. I, I just don't care anymore. I think that's the problem. But Cle- my, Clemson I got to get, uh, get a new notepad here. Here's the thing. Georgia Clemson is a two-touchdown spread. Yeah. I said in terms of brands. brands. I just told you the ter- the game in terms of brands from a like amount of fan standpoint. I don't know. Clemson and Georgia collectively have won. I think A and M Notre Dame is going to be a really good game. I think it's a coin flip one way or another. I'm not betting it. I think it's going to be interesting. Maybe the unders the play there now that we're talking through it. Mm-hmm. But I-, I could see it being. 21 17 either way 24 21 something like that where it's an actually like entertaining football game the problem i have with the clemson game is not that i don't think clemson is any good i think clemson is getting undervalued here i think that georgia just throttled fsu in the last bowl game and so here's kirby smith let's talk about carson back to win the heisman they just gave him a you know a private plane deal like Really? I don't know. I think it's just they're they're just so talked about because they kind of are trying to do Kirby's trying to be Nick Saban 2.0. I, 
I don't think it's going to be a good game. The last time those two played, it was 10 to 3 and nobody scored an offensive touchdown. When was that? 2021. Yeah, it was awful. So that's all I'm saying is like, I don't think it's going to be a good football game. I think LSU, 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 USC is going to be a good football game. I think Notre Dame, A&M is going to be a good football game. I think Florida, Miami is going to be a good football game. Yeah, I do too. I think that is a good game. Florida, Miami. Yeah. All right, look, let's put a couple things right to bed here. In terms of branding, in terms of brands, the biggest game of the weekend, Sunday morning, Liverpool at Manchester United. At Old Trafford, at the Theater of Dreams, for our third Premier League game of the season. That's not even a question. Now, what's the best college football game of the weekend? I'm gonna. I, I'll say I think it's Notre Dame and AM. I think that. I, I think said that, that. And you wanted to argue you and say it I was. I know you did. And then, Clemson, and I Georgia. Wrong. I was wrong. It was. It's. It's. It's wrong. Good. As long as you know I, you're wrong. I think it's Notre Dame and AM. That game's Saturday night in College Station. So here's a bet that I made this week. I bet Notre Dame to make the college football playoff at minus 160 because I looked at their schedule. If they win this game on Saturday. You made that bet or you saw somebody else make it and you joined them? No, I bet myself. Hmm. If Notre Dame beats a... Minus 160 on a yeah. futures bet? Yeah. What's yeah. wrong with that? I just don't like locking up my money at for a long locking time. Locking up your money? You've got unlimited money. This is a, it's a, it's a layout for me, a regular working guy. Listen, if you look at Notre Dame's schedule... The games that were supposed to be hard, they host Florida State. Yep. They play at USC, which I'm not saying that'll be an easy game. And then they got at this game at AM. If they win on Saturday, and they're a three point underdog, so mathematically they probably won't, but they easily could. They're almost in the playoff already. The the best the best part is you've got Colin Klein calling the plays for AM. Well, they, they were, I, I should say this, they were a three-point underdog, but as we were two and a half. recording the show, we took a sharp bet on Notre Dame plus three. Now yeah. they are a two-and-a-half-point underdog. So Notre Dame's got a very, very, very favorable schedule, and you know me, Kelly, I'm a cynical guy, and I think that the committee is going to want Notre Dame to be in the college football playoff yeah, because they're the Notre Dame. Yeah. So that, that's part of the handicap I get there. It. Let's go through... Other sharp plays for week one of college football. I'll start with this one only because I saw the kid on social media, the Michigan State quarterback, saying if you bet the game, bet the over. Did you see this clip? You didn't see this? You're on social media like all the time. I've been working all day. We saw sharp bets on the under, under 48 and a half, under 47 and a half. Well, I think we're all the way down to 45 last night. I looked at that one. That's Friday night against Florida Atlantic. Yeah, I have Saturdays. Florida Atlantic. I have Florida Atlantic plus 14. Saturday's games. Look, I, I went to West Virginia University. I'm wearing a pullover. They did bet West Virginia plus 10 and a half. And now we're down to eight. West Virginia. Yeah. It sucks that the game. I, snoo- I snoozed on that one, but they're in my parlay. It sucks that the game is at noon. I know it's because it's the Fox Big Noon. I don't think it sucks the games at noon at all. I don't agree with that. Why wouldn't we, why wouldn't you want it to be in prime time in Morgantown? Let the kids get all uh, lathered up. All right. Arizona State minus six and a half. They host Uh-oh. Wyoming. I have Wyoming. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm just telling you that a pretty respected group Wyoming, lays six and a half. Wyoming was my best bet yesterday on bet on it. Really? Okay. Well, yeah. that's a head. That's a head to head. Now this one's moved a lot, but it makes sense. Colorado State they took 35 and 34 and a half. Texas plays who next Saturday? Michigan, which is why you want to play Colorado State and Fresno State this week because these teams don't give a shit about each other. I agree. They care about the next week. I think you've got a a, just a massive game looming in Ann Arbor next weekend, and it's just a classic look ahead spot for both Texas and Michigan. I, I agree with Kelly there. And then this one, I like this one too. UNLV plus three. They are at Houston. There's a lot of buzz about UNLV this season. There is. But there really he, is. Houston's people, not any good. I can say that people in Las Vegas are like, usually they just fake being excited about UNLV football. You know what I mean? The, I think this this year, I don't think it's fake. I think people really are genuinely excited about the Rebels. And I don't. I, I moved here in 2007, and I don't think I've ever said that before. I People are excited about UNLV football, plus three at Houston, 
that'll be the late game. And college Friday. football is minus 109, correct? Yeah, our college football sides. Okay. We're dealing all those at minus 109. Notre Dame, I mentioned Notre Dame plus three at AM. The total of that game is 46. Remember, we opened this game at Pickle and it got moved all the way up to three. Had some sharp money come in, plus three, minus 109 to Kelly's point. We moved to plus two and a half, minus 109. And then Sunday, the game I'm going to, which is going to be pretty cool, actually, at Allegiant Stadium, LSU is minus four and a half against USC. They took six in this game early on, and, and there was a sharp group that went over 63 and a half. So if you just have to bet something, you know, if you just can't help yourself, if you can't just enjoy your Sunday, maybe think about those two options. Kelly, that, that is a cool game. That, that's a pretty cool game. Are you going to go? Yeah, I'm going. I figured. I'll be, I'll be there on Sunday. Yeah. After Liverpool, Manchester United, which, of course, for me, is the biggest sporting event of the weekend. Noted. Well, Can I hope you... you have a great time and uh, fight on. Is that what the Trojans say? Fight yeah, on? Yeah, they say fight on. Because they're, in my, run, they're uh, in my parlay as well. Run us through your parlay. Run, run well, we already went through two of them. West Virginia until James Franklin decides he's going to punch it in and somehow I lose the plus eight when I could have had 11 because I'm an idiot. What would Wyoming, you do in that scenario? Would you be mad at James Franklin or at yourself? Both. Uh, Wyoming, I think they can win outright. Okay. Arizona State has been atrocious against the spread, especially as a home favorite. Just go ahead. You know the commissioner of that league that we were talking about earlier? He went to Arizona State. So do you Shocker. feel like – is this like a blossoming rivalry? Between oh, God, I, I hope they – I mean, obviously, plus six and a half is wonderful, but I hope they lose out right now for a magnitude of reasons. Uh, you, can, you can bet plus seven, minus 109 right here at the Superbook. And, oh, and – I'm a little I'm a little late. I bet plus six and a half yesterday. This uh, getting the best of the number has not been very good for me. You know what's funny? I actually – one of my picks last night in the College Football Wins League, you want it? Wyoming. Okay, so I like go. it. I'm with you. I think a lot of people are overblowing uh, Craig Bull leaving. And we're on Florida, another team that I was way too late on the party on. Could add four and a half. Uh, now it's two and a half, so I just mm-hmm. bet the money line by itself. And last but not least, the USC Trojans. Right on. We'll see. Lincoln, please tell me. I mean, he's been talking about finding a defensive coordinator for over a decade now. Please tell me he actually has a defensive coordinator. I mean, I'm not betting the under, but if they could just make one stop against this LSU team, I think they can win the game. Do you feel like, honestly, like what what would this thing pay approximately? Give me a number. It should pay close to 70 to 1 when I put it in the Superbook app earlier. So don't you think that's too much? I mean, can't don't you want to just dip your toe in the water? Maybe. Win? Well, I could have left out West Virginia. I, w- I went on the, like, I went on the fence. Do I want to add another? Do I not? Do I want to add FAU from Friday night? Then I was like, no, I don't. So, yeah. The famous one that you hit, the first one, what were the odds? 85 to 1. Oh, Jesus. Wow. Really? And then I had a 78 to 1. And then the following week, I hit a 40 to 1. And those were the same season? Yeah, those were the back to back ones when I worked at Barstool. Wow. Okay. So I guess you could hit it at 70 to 1. West Virginia. Yeah, of course I can hit at 70 to 1. They're at home against Penn State in Morgantown, a game that should be played at night. We're going to talk about that. Wyoming, that game's Saturday at Arizona State. Florida, they host the U. Miami. Mario Cristobal, a guy who doesn't really like to knee, knee on the ball. The, That's guy not who, the guy who is going to Neil Brown himself. <laughs> and then USC here in Las Vegas at Allegiant Stadium against LSU. That's a cool game. You got the... Those two teams are replacing the last two Heisman Trophy winners and the first two picks in the draft. Both, both NFL starting yeah. quarterbacks. That's yeah. pretty cool. That's a pretty cool game. Do you want to go to the mailbag section? I will the, open up the mailbag. Another, right? um, the mailbag. But before I do this, uh, our producer found this, and I thought this was a really funny thing. He found it on, like, some Vegas Reddit page. Anyway, the – the subject line is a night in Vegas with no hotel and twenty dollars. Okay. So I lost my fantasy football league last year, and the punishment is I have to show up to our Vegas draft a day early with no hotel room and only twenty dollars. Any recommendations on cheap, free things to do I can do while there, or get some free play or free drinks, food, or where the cheapest tables are? Any advice is much appreciated. Well, 
Is he like, what is he trying? Is he trying to find lodging? Like, what is he? He's going to have to sleep in the sports book. Right. Oh, great. That's exactly what I want to hear. <laughs> I mean, but, where else would you sleep? You can't sleep against a slot machine. They're going to wake your ass up. Would you consider this $20? Not, it gets you nothing. Because of, because of you and, and your, your... Even at the El Cortez where I used to play $5 double I mean, down blackjack when I first moved there. That doesn't even exist anymore. So if we agree that $20 is basically $0, why not try to do some sort of a wager to turn the $20, like find out what's, what is the cheapest hotel room I can get? And golden gate, I I think is the answer. What do I have to take the $20 to win enough just to get that one room for the night? Like put the $20 on black. Hope it hits. It would would probably have to be like a parlay or something. Cause I I don't think. Oh, I see what you're saying. Like go to the sports book, put in a $20 parlay to win. I would try to find the cheapest room I could get, figure out what well, it so is. So what if, what if you lose, you lose, then, then you have nothing to even buy like water or food with. Well, I think you can get free water. Can you? I don't know. Uh, Cause I used to work at a place to charge $8 and uh, the last time I was in Vegas, I'm pretty sure I spent $16 on a bottle of water somewhere. Well, you could, I guess you could stick the 20 into a video poker machine, make sure that the bartender sees you and then just pretend to be playing and get some free drinks. Maybe. See, I think what I would do is I try to find the cheapest room. Let's say I could find a room for seventy bucks, and then I'd bet twenty to win fifty on something. I, I would try to get lodging first, and I work my way back. <sighs> no, food. Food is more important than lodging. What kind of a what kind of a punishment is this, by the way? It's like so it's hilarious. It's like, is what it is. Think I, about how much your friend you have to hate each other. You come in I last in your last. fantasy league. I was uh, I did a show with Clay Travis earlier, and I was like, hey, we should have a fantasy side bet. So then I'm like texting my partners, and of course they want it to be monetary, which is fine. But I'm like, Clay and I've got to have something hilarious, not that bad, but like something funny, like. You have to fly on a spirit flight all football season for work, like something awful. But you see, that's you and Claire are both rich. We so, both fly Southwest. Relax. So the money doesn't it doesn't mean to you what it means to the working people, right? I think, I think that's pretty harsh. I mean, essentially, what you're saying is the loser of the fantasy league has to go to Las Vegas and be homeless for a night. That's yeah. tough. that's a bad punishment, man. Yeah, like that that is no good. I mean, you know, every time I see like the weirdo guys and like. The like high heels and like the like banana hammocks walking around that people post. And they're like Vegas. I'm like that dude totally lost his fantasy draft. Oh yeah, yeah. I believe that's probably true. That's awful too. That sucks. Because no fan- then you go viral and everything's. You're like, I don't know what they think. <laughs> I'm gonna stick with fantasy baseball. Fantasy baseball. Okay. Let's see. First question. Vince in PGH on X says, this applies to my Pitt Panthers, but in general, how does the book go about setting opening week lines for a team replacing every offensive coach and will play two quarterbacks? Good luck is is, is the best thing. I mean, you've got your power ratings and you've got to be willing to be flexible when you have a team with that many question marks and you've got to let the sharper players guide you to the right line. Let, you know, let them move the numbers around. Nobody really knows what's going to happen with a team. It's good. They're playing two QBs. They've got all new offensive coaching. You don't really know what's going to happen. That's why you have low limits when you open these games and just let the market guide you to the right number. I'm skipping number two. What else could you do? That's all you can do. That's all you can do. I'm skipping number two. How many entries are in the Super Contest? Where do you establish that? I think we're around 720. John Murray has been so busy. He has not walked 25 feet from his desk to go double check. Well, uh, I, walk, sh- I haven't been to that part of the casino yet. Chudo on X says, my friends and I blindly take every Kelly and Vegas pick all college season long. Does Murray condone this type of behavior? I don't. I, I don't. I don't think you should blindly follow anybody. I don't. I don't think. It wasn't think, either so, you fade or you tail. You, but it has to be all of it. You can't just cherry pick. No, but, but here's the thing. Here's the problem with Kelly. <laughs> just a funny way to start the sentence. Here's Kelly's problem. She she does get a lot of sharp information, and she's got some good thoughts. If she could control herself, she could really do well. But she bets too much. I don't even. I didn't even bet anything tonight. I told you that earlier. You <laughs> so said I was a liar on Twitter. I wanted our producer 
John Hoagland tried to convince me to join him on North Dakota State, and I so badly wanted to, but I was like, no, I'm, I, uh, I don't I'm just not going to do it. I don't think you should do that, but I don't think – see, see, here's another problem for at Shudo. He's not he's not going to be able to follow all your picks. You're rich. You can afford to bet like a million things. This guy can't do that. He, he's probably like – I me. literally tweet oh, out on Saturday morning here. everything that I'm on. Anyway, at Jason still 12 on XS. I have a doctor friend who's having a party this weekend, and he called – me to ask for a mutual friend's phone number to invite them. The thing is, he didn't technically invite me. Do I show up or would I be looked at as a troublemaker? Yeah, it's troublemaker behavior, man. It's Woody Woodpecker. Can't, can't be doing stuff like that. No, don't do it, Jason. Good reference, though, by the way. Okay. okay. Jason's uh, still 12. He's really upping his reference game. Got it, because I have no idea. I'm like, I know no, you, you, sh you should just go. To, no, if you, you just want to go to Vegas, just go to Vegas. <laughs> uh, but it's just a random party. I don't know. Uh, it's a reference to a show. At Generals underscore George on X says, any chance John Murray would arm wrestle Tyson Bajit's dad? John is younger, so he has a chance. No is the answer. Are you sure I'm younger than that guy? I mean, I like we we get to a point now. Or yeah. I'm, I'm not going to age Kelly. I'm at a point now where. Wait, like, am I older than you or are you older than me? No, I'm, I'm several months older than you. But. Yeah, yeah, you are. Yeah, I like, knew that. Yeah, so you're older than me. When Spain won the Euro tournament against my England team, one of their star players was a 17-year-old kid, and his dad is like 32. Yeah, that's you what know? happens so, when you have kids in high school, John Murray. <laughs> so we are at a point where some of these athletes, dad. My goddaughter is graduating from college this spring. What? <laughs> yes. Tyson Badgett's my dad. My friend had her when she was 19. Tyson Badgett's dad is like a arm wrestling champion ah. and i bet he's not much young or older than me no I, I don't think so probably not generals george i, I don't i don't think that's a good idea at ts finky on x says what percentage of bankroll should be dedicated to season-long futures if you play them i can't tell you what i do because john murray will not approve of it so it's, a, it's an interesting question there's there is no correct answer to this question it only it would all depend on what you had access to in terms of like if you found season long futures that were such great value, you should just bet that and then not have any bets all year if it was that great. Like I and I'll tell you a quick story. I think it was oh eight, it might have been oh nine, one of those two years. I went down to the strip on my day off to bet Super Bowl props and I got into a sports book and I noticed they had a sheet on team to win the women's college basketball championship. Okay. And this this was one of those years where you know scumbag Gino Ariema had like 15 McDonald's All Americans yeah. and there was there was no chance of Connecticut losing. They went undefeated. The sheet said UConn three to one. And and I went up to the window oh, wow. and tell her, I remember this, and I, I said, I just said, hey, is this still three to one? And she goes, oh no no, it's two to one. And I brought a little bit less than three thousand dollars with me to bet on Super Bowl props. And I bet every dollar of it on that because that was a better bet than anything I was going to get on the Super Bowl. And of course, UConn ended up winning the national championship game that year by like 40 points. Yeah. And I took, you know, whatever it was to say it was $3,000 and turned it into $9,000, which is better than my ROI was going to be on anything I did on the Super Bowl. So there's yes. no way to really answer that question unless I know what kind of access you have to great futures plays, there's no simple answer there. I would agree with that. Uh, oh, and I told, I, some my, I told some of my coworkers about that bet, and they went and bet it too. And then the day of the national championship game, they were playing Louisville. They were like a 30-point favorite in yeah. the national championship game. And one of the other books in town put up a money line. And one of my coworkers, I was like an admin here at the time, was like, hey, dude, I'm going to go over to the I'll name of the casino on my lunch break and bet the money line on Louisville. Do you want me to bet anything for you? And I called him a word that you were allowed to say back then, but you can't say now. But no, I think you're like, allowed to say it again. I think it's making a comeback. I heard I said, it a lot in New York City. I said, why don't I just take 100 bucks and light it on fire? No, I'm not going to do that. And, of course, Connecticut won by, like, 40 points. Come on. Sounds Next, about right. Uh, okay, at zero one TK one on excess for the super book NB NFL over under win total contest. The season wins one that I did the video on. Can you print out the form before you arrive? Is it on the yeah, you go to, super book site? 
go to westgatelasvegas.com, go to the Superbook, and then click on the icon for that contest. Okay. And, yeah, they've got the win totals for all the teams right there. I suppose you could print it. If you had access to a printer, I don't know if you do, at 01TK1. Who doesn't have a printer? Can you print the form? You tell me, buddy. You tell me. Okay. What, uh, <laughs> anything else you want to talk about? We're going to do, so we're going to do a show next Every single Thursday. Thursday. Next Thursday. Every so, single Thursday. Are no our excuses. guys, are our guys going to have enough time to get up any Eclipse? Because that Thursday is a very big NFL game between the Chiefs and the Ravens. Yeah, it, listen. Thursdays are going to be my personal version of hell. I'm a little, a little afraid of Thursdays. Uh, I have two less shows this Thursday than I do next Thursday with NFL starting. So I may have to send some text messages out and ask for a little bit of, a little bit of, uh, like, can we, Love. can we pivot? I had oh, one, two, three, four, five, six shows today. Oh, and that doesn't include a show that I'm going to be on starting on in a couple of weeks, which is really exciting. I'll make the announcement once it's a done deal. The show that I'm going to do with Chris Thurston. So, like um, Chris and Thurston. then also I didn't do my lacrosse video today because I had to do my parlay video today and lacrosse doesn't have their, um, their playoff start till Monday anyway. So I just figured I'll record that tomorrow. It'll be fine. I think it's weird that you text me a lot. Like you text me and Chris Thurston. You're like, Hey, John Murray, this is Chris Thurston. As if I don't know who he is. Like, yeah, strange. If I haven't texted in the group years. for a long time, I wanted you to just be like, oh, hey, like, I don't know. I don't know if you have them saved in your phone. I do. do you you do have them saved in your phone. I have okay. Chris, I have Chris Cause, uh, I have people in multiple group chats. I just never save their number. I just know that that's the group chat. That's, that's a pretty good answer. So that's exciting. This is exciting, too. We talked about it a little bit, but. We're doing minus 108 on all NFL sides, minus 109 on all college it's sides. Huge. I mentioned Thursday night football. Thursday night, the day of the game, for all the Thursday night games, we're going to deal the side at minus 105. So Chiefs-Ravens, oh. that Thursday, it'll be minus 105 straddle, which could mean, this is important people understand, a minus 105 straddle, that might mean minus 110 here, even there. Yeah, it doesn't even. necessarily mean both teams are minus 105. Correct. But if that's the straddle. And then for UNLV... We're going to do minus 105 for all their games, too, because I think UNLV football is going to be fun this year, Kelly. I think it's going to be fun. I think West Virginia is going to be fun. And I've been looking at maybe trying to make a move to Morgantown for that Kansas State game. Now, after – no, 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 I already yeah. made the executive decision. Ariel and I are going to K-State KU the week before. Well, then I'll just go without you. Oh, my God. <laughs> I literally have been asking you for weeks. I got a busy, I got a busy calendar in October. I'm trying to make it work. Trying to make it work. John Murray, because then here's the problem: it's it's Morgantown, then it's K State, KU, then I have to come to Vegas for a week. I will die. I almost died from Denver, Vegas to New York City. Yeah, that's a lot. That's a lot. That's a lot. And that's why okay. I asked you to make a decision, and then I bullied Ariel into booking a flight to Kansas City so we could go to the game. That's what I'm talking about. I think Ariel's better off without you in her life. You know, that's what we talked about earlier. I don't, I don't, Goodbye. Know, if I don't know if you're a net positive. Bye. <laughs>